Hi guys, so today's video is going to be a non-spoiler book review for The Thief by Megan Wallen Turner. I always thought it was Megan Whalen Turner, but I went back and forth between this and the audiobook, which is fantastic, but I can't tell if that's how you actually pronounce her name or if it was just Steve West's accent. Either way, for those of you who do enjoy audiobooks, I do think that you'll very much like the audiobook for this one because Steve West, who happened to actually narrate Strange the Dreamer, I did not place those there, on purpose, but he is a fantastic narrator. He also did the An Ember in the Ashes books, so if you are looking for a good audiobook that is relatively short, because The Thief is a pretty short book, I highly recommend this one, and I also highly recommend the book, because I greatly enjoyed it. I don't think it is even what I normally like, nor is it really, when I describe it, probably gonna sound like something that you would enjoy, but I loved it. The setup for the story is we follow a young protagonist named Jen, and he, at the beginning of the book, is being released from his prison cell. He was arrested for thievery, and now the king has been so impressed by his stealing abilities that he has decided he wants to actually employ him. And so the story follows Jen as he is on this quest to steal something from the king. He doesn't really have a choice. He basically has to accept this offer or he's not really gonna have much of a life left. So he goes on this mission with a few of the king's men. And the book is then essentially a traveling story. I know a lot of people don't really like traveling stories. I don't particularly love traveling stories all the time unless it's very whimsical, and I wouldn't say this one is particularly whimsical. It's kind of Roman inspired, and a lot of the journey is them stopping and making camp, and then Jen complaining that he's hungry, and then Jen complaining that he doesn't like horses. <laughs> and it's just a lot of that as the book goes on, and he doesn't really know what he is supposed to steal. It's kind of a you'll know along the way sort of situation. He doesn't know why he's supposed to steal this mysterious object. He doesn't really know if he's gonna be put in danger. He doesn't know if there's gonna be political consequences or if it's just something pretty. He has no idea what he's getting into. So you don't really know as the reader what you're getting into, but the story is entirely told in first person point of view from Jen's perspective. And I loved it his perspective. I found him cheeky. I found him sassy. I found him to be the kind of character that is realistically frustrating at times because occasionally he does things and you're like, dude, just keep your mouth shut. But at the same time, you're like, ah, that was kind of funny though. Towards the beginning of the book, I had a lot of tabs and almost all of these tabs are things that I was very amused by, things I found funny. And they're not really in your face funny. They're just... I don't know, they're very subtle. And one example would be they're on this mission and he's exhausted because he's been living in a prison cell, not very not very energized, not getting a lot of movement, not getting a lot of good nutrition, and now he's on this quest that requires a lot of physicality. And at one point, he just decides, okay, they're not gonna stop, but I really wanna stop. So he just like slums off his horse and then just falls into the ground and decides, well, if they leave me here, I can just be a marker from this town to this town. And something about that entire scene, which is pretty early on, was so funny to me, but that's what I mean by, it's not really in your face funny, the characters have hilarious dialogue or anything, but I still found those types of things really funny. I actually have always thought it's harder to have good characterization when you're writing first person point of view Weirdly, you would think that you would get to know the character better because you're always in their head, but instead, because the character is always having to tell you the story, you sometimes get less of them, and if you do get their feelings, it almost feels too surface level because it's like, this made me angry, this made me sad, and it can be really difficult to feel like a character has come to life when they're the ones telling the story. I don't know if any of you feel that way, but that's how I typically feel, and I did not feel that way at all. The thing that kept me going through this book was Jen. It was his voice. I just always loved him. I loved him in this story. I also felt that the author did a fantastic job of showing the personalities of the other characters that Jen is on this mission with. Even though it's a very short book, 
I still felt like I knew exactly the kinds of people that all the other individuals were. And it was nuanced, but I just felt like they were real people. And I love that in stories. And I love the dialogue as well, because I felt like the dialogue was a representation of whatever Jen was noticing about the other characters. It wasn't just Jen being like, that guy's a nice guy, that guy's a jerk. It wasn't that. He would make observations, and then you would kind of see those things be true purely because of the show-don't-tell aspect of it. You sort of have the tell just through Jen's observations, but then the show element is done so well, in my opinion, because their mannerisms, what they say, how they say it, how they act in general, I feel like all of it fits really well. And as Jen is getting to know these other characters, you're getting to know these characters. And there are some really subtle things in here that, man, did I like, sometimes I hated the other characters in a good way. They would say something, for example, at one point, Jen overhears the character that is kind of the leader of the group. He is telling this story that has to do with the lore of the place that Jen is from, and this other character is not from this place. And so Jen tells him, you got a few things wrong. And then the guy says, okay, well, you tell me then. How is it actually supposed to be? And then Jen tells him these other things. And he says, I know this because my mother used to tell me this story. And there's a part where the character tells him, your mother took a lot of liberties with this story then. And I'm just like, ugh, because that character's like, I'm educated. I've seen all of the ways that this story is supposed to go, and I know the truest, purest form of the story. And to have somebody who's not even from that land act like they know better than somebody who was raised by someone from that land and heard the story directly, like, that little thing, that little detail, I'm like, dude, are you serious? You're acting like you know his, his own country's lore better than him? But it was such a tiny little thing, but the way that the interaction went about, I was like, gosh, I hate this guy. But I love that. It wasn't like he did this terrible deed or something, and that's what caused me to think, like, what a jerk. It was the little things. And I love that because isn't that what it's like often in real life when people say just the little things that grind your gears, and you're like, ah, that's what I felt like the author captured so well. And it was not only the irritating things that other characters did, but the really heartwarming things or the really silly things just in general. I thought the author always captured those things so well. Now, I've mostly been singing the book's praises, despite the fact that I said this might not be a book that you would think you would like, and that's because really, basically nothing happens. I, it was really dry, and honestly, maybe I just like boring books or something, because I feel like if somebody said I didn't like that book, it was boring, I'd be like, yeah, it was boring. <laughs> but I loved it, and I suppose it's boring in the sense that you, because a not, not a lot of things are happening as far as movement or action or things like that. There's not a lot of scheming necessarily. It's just kind of derping. Like, oh, we're headed from point A to point B. We got to point B, now to point C. And it's a lot of that. And then a lot of talking and a lot of storytelling. I loved the storytelling. I don't always like that in fantasy books. But I felt like the stories were brief enough whenever they would tell a story, and it just helped build the world. I swear, I don't know how this author managed to have such great world building in such a short book, but they did. From the economy, to the lore, to the politics, there was just so many things about it. The tra Like, the trade with the politics, I thought they did such a good job of outlining, like, why this kingdom wants to have the king marry this queen so they can have access to this road, and all those little intricacies, I just thought came through really well so many times. And then the storytelling, like I was saying, whenever they would talk about the lore, I just felt so engrossed in those stories. But like I said, it's just them walking and then talking and then storytelling, and then they'll get to a place and they're like, well, we need to adjust our plan a little bit. That's mostly it. The ending does pick up. There's a little bit more going on toward the end, which is good, and I can't wait to read more of the series because I hear it gets better and better. But 
yeah, not a ton happens. <laughs> anyway, let me know your thoughts on The Thief. Let me know if you enjoyed it, if you agree with some of the things I said, if you hated the book, if you loved it, just let me know whatever your thoughts were. If you want to chat spoilers, just make sure you write spoilers really big and then enter a bunch of time so that nobody is spoiled. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you guys later. Bye.